I have COVID. So about a week ago, I started to experience some pretty mild symptoms such as runny nose, a mild headache. I don't get many headaches, so it was unique. Uh, Tylenol and some nasal spray later and I felt fine. And I thought I was just kind of nursing a sinus headache, essentially. Uh, but then I got a text message that a family member just tested positive for COVID and that we should all consider being tested. So I went to get tested and sure enough, I had COVID. Uh, so the nice part was this really opened up time of what can I do at home? Uh, so I wanted to get a lot of things done that I normally wouldn't want to do. One of those things was making this room nice again. Uh, this real gray area happened where we were teaching online from home, so I brought home everything I could possibly need from school because we we're gonna be locked out of school. Uh, then we went back to hybrid, but again, I didn't need things back in school because we were teaching over the internet still from school. So no supply is really necessary uh, besides technology going to school that helps me do those things. And then we went to full in-person for summer school where I could finally utilize the instruments in my classroom that have been sitting there dormant for about a year and a half. And then now we're in a situation where I'm locked out of school again, I don't have my keys, and some things are at home that need to go to school, some things are at school that need to come home. But now that we're three weeks away from school getting started again, I need to reset where everything belongs. And so I got to do a nice deep cleaning of this room, getting anything that didn't belong out of it, and sending everything back up the way it should be. Unfortunately, there's no other place to put those items than my garage. So they'll be in my garage ready for that first day we get our keys back to get everything back to where it's supposed to go. But what I want to do today is review all of the content I've already created on the topic of COVID. So I'm going to skip over some original songs that have to do with COVID and just look at was it valid? Did the validity last long? Was I wrong right from the beginning? And just kind of give it a quick review of yes, that was good advice or no, that was bad advice. Because at this point, it feels like predicting what's going to happen soon is just different. Talking to other states about how they handle their situation where maybe they never return. And I couldn't believe there are some schools that never return. On the other hand, there are schools in Las Vegas that never went distance. So it really does go both directions and having blanket statements doesn't help all that much. So I'd love to reflect on the advice I gave and see if it's stuck a year and a half later. Some of these things are gonna be pretty funny. Other things were pretty accurate. So let's review some of the things I came up with and we'll do this as rapid fire as possible. Dating all the way back to March of 2020, I wrote a song called COVID-19, and it was all about how people were panic buying items and how they're being polite to each other about their germs, but in actuality, we're all just kind of terrified and we really didn't want anyone to give each other germs. Uh, I thought it was a really funny song at the time, and then the older it got, the less funny I thought it was, because it kind of just proved true, I think. So, uh, I give it 18 out of 19 COVIDs. Shortly after we were all sent home, I released the song Miss Me Too. Now, I was working on this song with the school choir. It was going to be like our big sad song for the end of the year. And then it just, it seemed too right. We were going to miss each other. We thought we were going to be home for two, three weeks. And once we got the word that maybe the school year was over for music at least, is when I thought this song has to come out. And sure enough, it rang very true because I missed all those fifth graders that I really never got to see again after that moment. And then continuing to the next year, I didn't see those fifth graders until the last two months of school. So Miss Me Too really rung true. I give it 19 out of 19 COVIDs. The next video came out with still in March of 2020 was a vlog about how I write a song from no ideas to a finished song in 30 minutes. And I thought it was a great video, but it really tanked as far as views. People didn't find it as interesting. So I'm gonna give it five out of 19 COVIDs. I'm gonna group together a couple of videos, but these plain videos, videos where you could play an instrument, make sound effects, where you could press the numbers on your keyboard, and it played songs. Uh, originally, they were not great, they didn't take off, and then as we had to teach online, some schools adopted them as their main way of making music, and they really took off, so I'm very proud of that product way to go. I have a huge opinion about these now, but the virtual choirs. I'm thrilled we made that virtual choir video. I, it's such an artifact of who we were and where we were in that time. But I am also happy to probably never make another virtual video again. Making that video was my kind of foot in the door to make videos for other schools, for other projects. And eventually, like five or six projects later, I was absolutely sick and tired of making virtual videos uh, and the problems that came along with them. And I think a lot of times, we underestimate how much of that video has to be perfection on the recorded end and not so much on the editing end. You know, we can do a lot of magic with editing, but boy, oh boy, nothing replaces actually performing well, which is something we were kind of getting around with that virtual performance. Fifth graders choosing electives was probably the greatest video I think I came out with regarding COVID. 
A huge issue that's going to continue to haunt middle schools is that fifth graders are not signing up for sixth grade electives in the music world. And that video is a great example of how to motivate students to sign up for those ensembles. And it's usually not a matter of will you do well. I mean, the teachers in sixth grade, that's their job. They take students who have never done it before and they make experienced players out of them. So that's never the issue. It's the, the issue on our side is how do we get them to sign up? Period. That's it. And I thought that video did a lot of good as far as getting students to want to sign up, and I've hopefully inspired other schools to do something similar. One Day to Pack My Classroom is such a great video. Like I love to watch it probably more than anyone just because I forget what it was like. I forget what happened. All, the, all those days kind of blur together. I forget how the school year ended. And it's such a great reminder to see that footage and go, oh yeah, that's what happened. Uh, and I, it's like a dire entry for me. So I'm thrilled I made that video and hopefully it really helped out some other people. The $3 music bag, I'm gonna say, is my second most important video I made during this COVID time because it was exactly what I ended up doing and I'm very proud of the end result. And I think a lot of people did as well because some of the products that I pushed in that video sold out immediately. And I mean, the day I posted the video, you couldn't find the egg shakers, the drumsticks. Even myself, when I ran out of drumsticks and needed to buy more, I had to go through different vendors because the people that I was going through were already sold out. I think that's a great sign for how helpful this was. I'm very proud of that video. I thought it was to the point and I thought it expressed exactly how I felt about the situation. Going forward, and this is the fun part, I've collected a lot of those items back. So now my classroom has 600 scarves in it. Can you think about the fun we're going to have if we're allowed to touch scarves? If the fun we're going to have, I can say, okay, I used to say everyone go get one scarf. Okay, now you get two scarves. Cool, now we're out of scarves. Everyone has two scarves, great. Can you imagine the excitement of me saying, I need you to go pick five scarves. I need you to tie them together, make a long, like, you know what I mean? Like the, the options of what I could do with 600 scarves in a room of 30 students is going to be very exciting. Uh, the same goes for drumsticks. I, I brought the drumsticks back in. So the amount of drumsticks I have, we can bucket drum all day long. You broke a stick, that's fine. Go to the bucket, grab another one. Same with the egg shakers. The shakers came back. There's not going to be a shortage of those three items for a long time. And so it really was not money wasted, but more money invested, which I'm very happy about. Six Feet Apart was kind of a polarizing song, funny enough. Like I thought that's what the government says, that's what the CDC says, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, and sure enough, it was, we just kind of found that some people subscribe to that and some people don't. Uh, I had some very wild comments on that video about uh, anti-masking, anti-vaccine, about me pushing an agenda, and I, I, I couldn't believe the amount of things I had to defend on a song that was supposed to be a helpful song about staying safe. Uh, so anyway, I stick by the song, but unfortunately, even the guidelines in my own state went away. We don't need those six feet anymore. We adopted three feet, and then who knows what's going to happen next. So the song is kind of invalid at this point, and I don't know if it's worthy of being deleted, but it's not something I'll be using anymore. The next video I put out was the finger cut video, and the whole explanation was putting a one cent cover over a mallet using it for an hour, throwing it away, putting on another one for the next class. And I was super excited about that working out, but then we never actually ended up being in the classroom when that was a regulation, when we couldn't touch the mallets. So we'll see what happens next year. If I need to do that, I'm thrilled to have that information already and like a thousand finger cots still, but I didn't end up needing that information. So 14 out of 19 COVIDs. The next video that had to do with COVID that we put out was the UpbeatMusicApp.com review where my dad and I used the website. We made a quick duet, which was pretty cool. I stand behind that review, but also they added a lot of features to that website since then. So it's almost out of date at this point, but I still stand by if you have to make a virtual ensemble, that's the website to do it at. I really support that. 18 out of 19 COVIDs. COVID Christmas was one of my favorite videos to make. I love making that song. I still think it's so true. How are you gonna handle someone coming into your house without a mask on in the middle of the night? So I definitely encourage having some sort of gift receptacle in the backyard, but loved making that song. And so funny story, backstory, uh, we had a different video idea. We actually had a whole video shoot where I was gonna be Santa and we were going to rent a car and have an elf driving like a nice car down the road and I was supposed to be sitting in the back seat of the car and there was gonna be like wide shots of the car driving down the road like we were Santa and the elf driving around. Uh, and then sure enough, the crew that I was gonna use, which are all family members because they're awesome, uh, but they all got COVID, funny enough, and not funny at all. Uh, but because they got COVID, and it was like the day of, the day we were supposed to get the car do the shoot, they got the results and they had COVID. And so it quickly turned into, 
well, I still want to put this song out. So that's when I resorted to changing outfits in this room and just recording the whole thing in like four hours instead of this big shoot. So maybe, I mean, not that I want COVID to still be a thing, but if COVID's still a thing in December, maybe we'll do the real video shoot that we always intended. That might be super cool. The next video I put out was a talking head video about the seven takeaways from teaching elementary music online. I super stand by everything I said. I thought it was accurate then, it's accurate now. I feel that way still, and honestly, we're just going to get smarter and wiser on the topic as we go. Luckily, there's a lot of conferences online right now, and all the topics are very relevant. We are right before COVID, it was like you kind of picked what you were passionate about. But right now, everyone, everyone cares about how do I teach online? How do I teach hybrid? How do I teach with students who have been home for a year and a half? The 12 days of Google Meets was by far my most successful video during COVID times. Uh, if I look at my data for that video, it just spikes. It's miles ahead of all the other videos when it came out. And I'm just really happy it went as well as it did. It was the truth. Everything I said, I had a real world experience with, and I didn't feel bad about saying that at all. I mean, every single example I saw in that video was something I personally experienced. I think that's why it was so funny and maybe relatable for teachers and students alike is because these were real things that were happening. We hear screaming, we hear TVs, we hear the parents, uh, and it was just, it's what it was. And I'm thrilled that time is behind us, right? 19 out of 19. I definitely noticed a slide of content from that point forward though. My next couple of videos having to do with my takeaways, my advice, things like that. This is around the time that all the teachers were being done with their school year. And I don't blame anyone, but viewership definitely took a huge dive. But it definitely seemed like the end of the COVID hysteria of needing content online. I didn't create any content about it, but I did go back and teach summer school all of June. And I didn't create any content off of it because it was just such a joy to do it. I didn't have any interest in pulling out the camera and staging a scene and trying to, it was just so lovely just to play music again. I'm honest when I say I had a tear coming down my face uh, when I heard that first note, that first song, that first playthrough. And I was just very emotional because it was a year and a half without hearing organized music live in person. So to wrap things up, I appreciate what a year it's been. We're about three weeks out from the next school year starting, which is insane. And because I don't really know what's gonna happen as far as, I think we're in our classrooms, I think we need masks, Nevada's rates are some of the highest in the country. I mean, I'm vaccinated and I got COVID. If that's how it's gonna be for everybody, I imagine we're gonna take a couple steps backwards uh, pretty soon. So we'll see how that rolls out, but I definitely wanna be a part of your experience. So thank you for sticking around with me. For people who are requesting soundtrack songs, I I promise I'll keep working on those. I have one that's ready to go, and just I just hate the idea of talking on the microphone when my voice sounded any worse. So now that I'm a little bit better, we'll get to those. Thanks for sticking around with me, and hopefully everything will go a lot better this school year. We'll see you soon.